Hello everyone. In the previous lessons we've been looking at vertical shifting and vertical uh, stretching for a for trigonometric graphs, but now we're going to look at the way that trigonometric graphs can also move in a horizontal direction. So we're going to start off with looking at how they can shift. Now remember shift means if you take this point over here you can move it to this point over here. Okay, so we've moved it in that direction over there. Stretching is something totally different. That's something we're going to look at in the next few videos. Stretching is if you have a piece of string like that, for example, and you pull either side, and so that the new piece of string looks something like that. Shifting, however, is taking a single point and then moving it so that it lands up over there. So what I want us to do for the beginning, just so we can start experimenting with what this minus 30 is going to do to the graph, is I want us to draw this graph over the interval of 0 to 360. So we just use the calculator for that. And so by now you guys know how to do this, but just remember we're going to go mode, then we're going to go to table. On the normal Casio calculators, the more basic ones, I think you would push option number 3. But nonetheless, you're looking for the option that says table. You would then type in the equation, so this is sin x minus 30. Once you've typed that in, you just push equals. g of x is any other graph, which we don't have any other one, so we'll just push equals. The starting point must always be the start that they gave you. So they want you to draw the graph from 0, so we'll say 0, and you must say equals. The ending point will be 360. And then your step, now this is an interesting one, your step must always be equal to the following. Step must always be equal to your period of your graph divided by 4. Now we know that a normal sin graph has a period of 360. If you shift that graph upwards, let's say you've got a sin graph and you shift it upwards, well all that's going to happen is your new graph's just going to do something like that. But you're not going to change the period. You only change the period if you start compressing it, so you make it look like that, or if you had to stretch it. But we are just sliding it along, so our period will still be 360, and so we can still say 360 over 4, and so our step will be 90. So we can fill in the 90 over there, and there we have it. It then gives us all the x values and all the y values. So now we can draw the graph. So the step that you used on the calculator, that's also what you want to use on your x-axis. So we used a step of 90. Most times in a test, they'll give you a piece of block paper to draw these. Then on the y-axis, well, we know that if we look on the calculator, the highest y value is 0, 0,867. But we should also remember that a normal sin graph goes up to 1, okay? And we're going to have to show that. So let's just let ours go up to 1. And then it also goes to negative 1. Now the reason I'm not going on the left here is because they've told us that we can go from 0. So now we just go fill in the values. So if you look on your calculator, when x is 0, then y is negative 0, 0,5. So that's that point there. Then when x is 90, y is 0, 0,866. So let's just fill that in on the y-axis here as 0, 0,866. Like that. Then at 180, it is 0, 0,5 there. 270 and negative 0, 0,866. That's something over here. So you can just fill that in on your y-axis as negative 0, 0,866 and then lastly 360 is negative 0, 0,5. There are other ways to do these questions. I usually don't use a calculator but I've noticed that many students do like to use the calculator and so for that reason I've just decided to show it using a calculator. And so this point's going to go somewhere over here. Then what you can do is try complete that as neatly as possible. So it's a sin graph so it We'll do something like that. Let me try that again. There we go. So we've got some type of shape over there. But now we need to try fill in a few of the missing gaps that the calculator can't help us with. And this is why I don't really like the calculator method. Due to the fact that we've actually moved up by 30 degrees. So we know that a normal sin graph has a turning point at 90 and 1. Now what does minus 30 do to a graph? Think of your parabolas, hyperbolas. Well it moves at 30 degrees to the right and so that's going to become 120 and 1. So this point over here should just be labeled 120 and 1. Now a sin graph also turns at 270 degrees and minus 1. But if you had to shift that up by 30 degrees, that becomes 300 and minus 1. So that's why this point over here will be 300 and minus 1. You see the calculator doesn't give us that. 
just due to that 30 degree over there. And so there we have it, we've got our graph. What I now want to do is talk about amplitude, range, domain, and period. So I'm going to do this for every single graph that we draw just so that you really get used to the idea of what it means. So amplitude is the distance from the resting position. So our resting position is this point over here. So if you had to look at that maximum distance there, that will just be 1. Okay, so the amplitude is 1. The range is the y value. So you always go y as an element. And then we're just going to go from minus 1 up to 1. Because you can see that the lowest value is minus 1 and the highest value is 1. The domain has nothing to do with the graph. It's got to do with what they gave you. So that is the domain. So the domain will be x as an element from 0 up to 360. The period, well now that depends on the graph. So we've learned that a sin graph and a cos graph, their normal period is 360. In grade 10, you couldn't really change that, but in grade 11, you can because you can cause the graph to stretch out or you can cause the graph to compress. But this graph has not been stretched or compressed. It's only been moved by 30 degrees. So the period, which is how long the graph takes to repeat, will still be um, 360 degrees.